All right, this tutorial is going to teach you how to create graphs out of data as well as information you grab from something like SurveyMonkey or Microsoft Forms and then turning that into meaningful data because it's not quite as easy as it looks. We'll start off with just making graphs. Uh, so here I've already pre-arranged some data, highlight it, uh, click insert. Uh, usually recommend it's the best way to go, but you can pick any of these if you really like. Um, and this becomes a scatter plot, but you can see that clearly it's all squished up one side. Uh, but that's okay. We can we can still go with that because it's got potential. Um, so what you want to do is double click that and click on this little drop down arrow. Um, you can change the horizontal value. Click on this little section of axis options. You can change the minimum maximums, and this will make it less squashed. Just look at your data and you say, all right, so my minimum value is like 150, 148. So I'm just going to go with 140. Um, and that spreads it out much more evenly. Um, and obviously we want to do the same for the vertical. So you click on the little drop down, choose the vertical. Minimum data value is like 14. So let's go with 10. We've got a scatter plot that actually takes up the entirety of the graph as opposed to one little corner. Uh, the only things that are really missing now are axis labels, uh, which you can do by clicking this little plus and then just choosing axis titles. Uh, so what is this? Hand span. This one down here is height. We've made a graph that shows a relationship between hand span and height of people so we'd give that a name give your graph a title give yourself your access labels um, ensure that the uh, the scale is correct and you've got a good graph um, we're going to do another one here as well um, once again we're just highlighting the data if it isn't arranged in this way um, just you know highlight it cut and paste it into the right positioning you know with control c control v control x etc to cut and paste uh, once it's aligned nicely highlight it um, once again we can pick recommended charts press ok um, and once again, you only need to put in uh, your labels and your title is yearly spent, age, title. All right, so that was the easy stuff. Uh, but most of the time when you get data, it's going to look like this. Um, and you're going to have to do a lot more work to make it usable. Um, so the first thing you want to do when you get maybe your data from a survey or from your whatever research or maybe you download it from the ABS website, whatever you did, you have to pick what you actually want to find. So, for example, this is a study showing physical activity, academic performance, and sleep all have some kind of connection. So, we're going to compare these two here. How many hours do you spend doing homework per week and what your average grade is? We're going to highlight those two. Find an empty space somewhere in your worksheet. I'm going to stick it over here. Um, and now you pretty much have to go through and categorize it. Okay, the easiest way to do that is to sort it. So, highlight the data you want to sort. Click data, choose this sort option here, and then you tell it which column you want to sort it by. I'm going to sort it by academic performance, which is AP, that column there. And it would be smart to put some labels up here. So this is av grade, and this is homework hours per night. I'm just changing the width of my cells to ensure that I can see my text. Um, and so now we just need to work out averages. Okay, so for all these ones that say less than one, um, we're just going to say one um, and this is all less than 50 percent so i'm going to make a, a cell over here i'm going to write uh, less than 50 and i'm going to work out the averages so this person spends four to five this person one to two one to two and one and i'm going to work out the averages so uh, probably the easiest way to do that is to just grab the midpoint from all of these so four to five we're just going to go 4.5 1.5 1.5 and we'll just go with one okay now we can just do an average so we make a sum or all some all equations in excel start with an equals type in the word average once you start writing it it'll give you some prompts i usually just choose that one and then you highlight the range you want to include so i'm going to highlight these cells here and i get my average so now i have anyone who gets an average grade of less than 50 their average spend is 2.5 a night of homework and I would continually do that for the rest of these. So I'm going to do that now and I'm obviously just going to skip through this. All right, so now I have uh, my averages for my various percentages. That was a fair bit of work, but I'm going to have much more meaningful information. Um, what I probably want to do is change the decimal placing because that is too large. So highlight the data with the decimals, click this little arrow till you've got a decimal point you like. I'm just going to go with one. Um, and now I've got information that is meaningful. So hours per night and average grade. All I need to do is highlight that now, turn that into a graph. Insert, recommended charts, um, and you can see a very clear and simple, to easy to understand graph um, from that information showing a relationship between the two data points, which is average grade and hours spent.
add your access title. So we've got hours spent studying and we've got our title, which is hours studying compared to academic performance is average grade. So that's one way to make your information a bit more meaningful uh, from something like this. Another way, uh, which is a little bit more painful, is to quantify the data. So sometimes you might get something like this where all the information is just like words. So what do you do about that? Well, you need to categorize it. So if you were to highlight it and then paste it somewhere where you've got some space, control C, control V, grab that and drag it so it's a bit bigger so you can read all the information. So pretty much you're gonna go through and try and categorize them based on maybe one or two words. So, you know, calming um, helps me focus. These ones here don't really say much, so you're probably gonna omit those. Um, and just gonna go through the whole thing until you can give them distinct categories of like calming or um, helps me mo be motivated, etc. All right, so now that we've quantified our data, we've categorized it, I'm gonna make a graph, uh, but we need to put some numerical values to this unless we wanna make like a text cloud or something. Um, and to do that, we need a bit of room. So I'm just gonna click up here and choose insert to bump these cells across. So I've got some space. I'm gonna drag this over as well, just so I've got a bit more room for my graph. Um, and now I'm gonna sort this. So I'm gonna highlight all this. I'm gonna click sort. I'm gonna choose column AV. Uh, once it's sorted, we want to try and uh, count the values. So uh, what would be smart would probably be to add additional space once again. Um, and we're gonna have each of our individual options. Calming, so just copy calming. Got detrimental, got focus, got health, got mental health. I'm just pressing Control C and Control V right now. Copying things into the right spot. All right, so these are our possible options. And now we just wanna count how many times these things occur. So there's four calming, there's one detrimental, six focus. Um, if you don't wanna manually count them, maybe you've got heaps and heaps of data, you can do a formula, which I can show you how to do now. So equals count if, so you're telling it to count if it has a certain criteria. You just highlight your range that you wanna count your specific value. And then in talking marks, just type in the word you wanna search for. So in this case, it's the word health. Um, and it will count every time it finds the word health in the range that you select. So that's one way to do it. If you had like hundreds of responses, that would be a lot more efficient. Motivation, seven, and no connection was three. All right, so now we have quantified it, but if we wanna make it look a little bit better because we don't have a huge amount of data, we would turn that into a percentage and the percentage looks a little bit nicer uh, in a graph. So once again, just add another cell so we can play around with that. Easiest way to create an average is to first work out the total. So equals, sum, open bracket, highlight the entire list. So our total is 26. Now to create um, a percentage from our data, we press equals, choose the cell you like, divide it by the number 26, or you can manually choose the cell as long as you put dollar signs in front of it like this to help us later when we drag it all the way down, uh, which I'll show you what I mean by that. So if you do it for the first cell and then use your mouse to hover this little square here, you'll notice your cursor changes to the black square cross and just drag it down um, and it'll replicate that formula for you. Um, if you didn't put the dollar signs in, it would be moving down every time your blue box moved down. Um, so now we've got a percentage. All you gotta do now is convert that. So highlight it, go up here to home, choose percentage. Um, and now we've got percentages. Uh, how am I selecting two points? I'm highlighting one, holding down control on my keyboard and then highlighting the next one. Uh, so you can choose data that isn't directly next to each other um, and then choose insert and we're going to do the classic pie chart to so make it a little bit bigger um, and we're going to give it a heading and we can see that most people think it's calming one person thinks it's detrimental etc etc um, and we can put the labels on this so if we were to go with data labels we can get our percentages uh, what would be smart would be to change the colors that are too similar so there's three blues um, which not great for clarity so let's change this one. So to do it, you just click on the data item and then you click again. So you just get it by itself. Um, and then you can just jump up here to colors and choose this little paint bucket. And I'm just gonna go with uh, purple because it's different. And I'll do the same for this other blue, that's better. All right, for clarity reasons, you probably wanna choose lighter shades. So once again, I'm just gonna double click on this purple and maybe make a custom color for purple and maybe just make it lighter um, and that way you can see your labels better. That was a long process, but we got there. So we have learned how to manipulate data from questionnaire and turn it into something meaningful.